Hey friends, welcome to Chemistry Lover and uh, you know I am not getting time much for making videos because I am involved in the PhD program so I have my own coursework and also I have to go to lab, spend more time in lab so that's why I am not getting time and also this board is in my home I didn't shift it to my mess yet so uh, after some days I will be managing this so uh, in this video I will be talking about a very important topic There's that uh, you know uh, that this question is a favorite question for any uh, question setter like uh, it may be your competitive exams like CSI, NET, GATE, JAM or any your university exam in any case this is a very important question that when you react your D glucose with some uh, carbonyl compound now that, that carbonyl compound may be aldehyde or maybe ketone and according to that uh, the product is different so this is the reaction the acidic medium so uh, I can say that uh, many of you don't know the uh, actual uh, reason for this different reactivity or the proper uh, cause of this difference uh, and uh, what will be the product so that thing I will be discussing in this video and uh, I will also tell that how you should uh, draw correctly the structure of D glucose or any other sugars so watch this video till the end because it is very important for you so let's start to this topic So to solve this question first, we have to know that uh, what is the structure of the D glucose, right? And uh, we also have to know that whether uh, it is uh, found in the open chain form or it is found in the closed uh, form, right? So uh, you you may draw the uh, structure of D glucose in the Fischer position formula, but uh, I already told that Fischer position formula is not at all useful. Uh, while you are doing reactions because in Fischer projection formula the molecules are given in the eclipsed conform conformation and uh, in uh, in the course of reaction they always do the reaction in the uh, staggered form so you should always know how to draw a molecule in other form projection formulas like Newman, Shawhorst or uh, uh, flying waves like that so in this case uh, we have to draw the D structure of the D-glucose in the uh, Shawhorst projection formula or Howard projection formula right now people struggle to draw the structure of D-glucose because you know in the D-glucose there are a lot of stereocenters and you cannot remember uh, just the stereocenters for uh, every sugar right so there is a trick that how, how you have to remember this so for that you have to always draw uh, the structure of any monosaccharide in its closed form not in the open chain form so first you should draw a cyclohexane ring like this and you place one oxygen here right now for D glucose, all the groups present in the cyclohexane ring they will be equatorial. So we put one OH here equatorial, another OH here equatorial, another OH here equatorial, and this CH2OH group. Now at this anomeric position, we uh, draw this OH group with this wavy bond. This represents that this OH uh, either may be equatorial or may be axial, uh, and uh, this is actually the mixture of the two. So uh, now from this particular structure you can always draw the open chain structure like this so what you have to do is that uh, put this OH here now this OH here another OH here another OH here and this OH here now you have to put this aldehyde group here now you can see this is very easy so, uh, if you uh, have to remember what is the stereo, uh, what is the configuration of this stereo center, this is stereo center, this is stereo center, and this is stereo center, that is that will be very difficult. But if you know that uh, I have to draw a cyclohexane chair form, then I have to place all the groups in the equatorial, and this is the structure of my D glucose. Then from this structure, you can always uh, go to the open chain form, right? So, uh, this is the open chain form of the D glucose, and when you treat it with slightly acidic condition it will always go to this chair form now another chair form is also possible which is a five member ring and to draw this five member ring we have to first rotate this particular bond right now rotation means uh, so what we have to do is that uh, we can write like this here you have this which these positions are same so just uh, this bond will be rotated so that means this OH group which was there it will come here and the other group which is there it will come this side 
right so this this is just after the rotation of this bond now you can see uh, this can attack here and it will give you another acetal which is a five member ring right so this is basically a five member ring where you have this particular group here and uh, this OH group is here and now so actually this O will be here right you can see this O is here and now you can see one thing is that this OH and this OH they are trans to each other so if this this is upward this will be downward and this other group will also be downward right so this will be uh, the structure of this five member ring okay now that means and these all these things are reversible right so there is a structural interplay between this structure and this structure via this open chain form so this uh, six member ring transform to the five member ring via this open chain form so in in your area uh, reaction medium both of this structure has some abundance although this uh, six member ring which is in the chair form that will be more stable and it will have the more abundance right now uh, when you react this uh, glucose compound with this uh, either this uh, acetone or this uh, aldehyde what will be the product right so let's say you first react it with aldehyde so if uh, aldehyde is reacting with it and i already told that uh, this six member ring is in abundance right so there is more percentage of the six member cyclic chair form and that's why uh, if you react uh, your glucose in acidic medium with uh, benzaldehyde or any other aldehyde this six member ring will react and you will get this product so here this OH will be here this OH here and you can see here you will have a chair form the pH will be here right so this cyclic acetal will form now why the cyclic acetal is forming between this OH and this OH because you can see in all, all other cases these and these they are trans to each other these and these they are also trans to each other but uh, in this case this OH and this OH are far apart from each other and although this group and this group are trans that doesn't mean that this OH are trans uh, this rotation of this bond is possible and you can see after rotation uh, this OH come closer to this OH and they are like C's okay they are in the same side so that's why uh, the acetal formation is possible only between this OH and this OH other for other OH uh, they all are trans in trans relationship and that's why the acetal formation is not possible so when you react your D glucose with benzaldehyde uh, so let's say this is A product so this will be your product A so what will be the case when you react uh, your D glucose with let's say any ketone for example in this case acetone so we can uh, draw a similar structure here like this so here we can draw like this okay so this this acetal is expected uh, what, according to what we have said till now but when you react your acetone with D glucose you will not get this product what you will get instead you will get this so here you have OH here you will have O and this will form and another acetal linkage will form here right so you will get this product. So let's say this is your product B. So this will be your product B. So why we are getting uh, this high member ring? Uh, although it is, uh, I, I already told that this high member uh, ring is less stable than this six member ring. But uh, when, you re when we are reacting with acetone, we are getting this high, uh, this five member ring instead of the six member ring. So why this is so? So this is because this particular structure is destabilized. Why it is destabilized? Because you can see. Uh, in this particular case, this is a six member ring and you have to place one of this methyl group into the in the uh, axial position, right? There are two methyl groups, so one you can place in equilibrium position, but other methyl group you have to place in the axial position. But here you can see one is hydrogen, another is methyl, or it, if it was acetaldehyde, then one was 
be Thailand and another North Thai doing. So one Hydrogen Atom is always there and then you have a chance that you can place this Hydrogen Atom axial so there is no destabilization. But in this case uh, you can see one methyl group you have to place in the axial position. So uh, we understand that this is less stable. Now why, uh, but in this case you can see there is again two methyl groups and uh, the I remember you also have envelope form so here you can say that yeah we we also have to place this methyl group in the actual position so why then uh, these five member rings are stable so for that we have to un we have to look at the stereochemistry or the interaction involved in a five member ring and in a six member ring right so uh, what i am trying to say is that let's say this is your six member ring and you have two methyl groups here and this is your five member rings and two methyl groups are there okay so what i am trying to say is that this structure will be more stable relative to this structure because of the presence of this axial methyl group although in both cases the methyl groups are axial why this is so so the destabilization uh, in, in the presence of axial methyl group originates from 1,3 diaxial interaction, right? So what is the source of this stabilization? It is the 1,3 diaxial interaction. So what is 1,3 diaxial interaction? This is the interaction between these hydrogens and uh, the hydrogen of this methyl group, right? So this is the cause of this destabilization. Now you can see there are two such hydrogen which can cause this 1,3 diaxial interaction. But when you have a five member ring, there is only one hydrogen which can cause this 1,3 diaxial interaction. So obviously, uh, the degree of destabilization will be less in, in, in case of this 5 member ring than in case of uh, this 6 member ring. So that's why uh, when you react this compound with uh, this uh, uh, acetone or any other ketone, it will always do this. Now, this, this do, that doesn't mean uh, that uh, you you cannot get a six membered uh, acetal uh, with this uh, acetone for example uh, this is one example from the gate exam that is you have this a star group here and this two and this diol is here and you are reacting it with let's say uh, acetone in presence of a plus so then what will be the product so in this case you get this six membered acetal right so in this case you get this six membered acetal and you can see again if you write down this six membered acetal you will have uh, this methyl group axial one of the methyl group axial so it will have this one three diaxial interaction but still it is forming why because there is no other option you don't have any option but to put this uh, acetal linkage here right there are no other uh, hydroxyl group but in this uh, d glucose case you can see uh, uh, due to this structural interplay between this five member form and the six member form there is a possibility that it can go to this five member form where it, uh, it has a chance to form a uh, cyclic acetal in the five member ring so that's why it will follow this pathway but in this case there is no uh, no such possibility so while you are solving the question you have to always uh, uh, look at all the possibilities that whether there are other possibilities or not if there is no such possibility then uh, although it is not very much stable there is a destabilization factor of this one theta actually in interaction but it has to do this because it has no other possibility so uh, this is the thing so this is a very important concept and a lot of questions come from this thing that uh, where the acetal will form so you have to always find out whether uh, there is a possibility for a five member ring formation when you are reacting with a uh, ketone so then it will always go to this pathway but if you don't have uh, that possibility then it will form this uh, stabilized uh, six member acetal and another thing is that with aldehyde it will always do this six member ring and uh, the last point is that you have to look at the stereochemistry if the two OH groups are equatorial uh, not equatorial if the two OH groups are in the same direction that is they are in the same side they are cis then only the cyclic acetal formation is possible if they are trans then there is no possibility of such cyclic acetal formation that that are the all things which you have to know about the cyclic acetal formation and i hope uh, you understand the concept and you will be able to solve any uh, question related to these topics 
and if you like this video then share this video with your friends and if you are new in this channel then subscribe my channel for getting more videos like that and thank you for watching